The first sign of the invasion came on a deceptively peaceful morning. I was crouched in a hunting blind I'd camouflaged in the thick foliage, observing a grave herd moving through the jungle valley below. The grazes were stocky, plated behemoths that provided solid sustenance if you were skilled enough to take one down cleanly. That's when a tremor shook the trees around me, followed by a distant boom that sent the grave stampeding. I grabbed my rifle and peered up through the canopy, dreading what I feared it could be. In a gap between the crimson sky and tangled branches, I caught a glimpse of flames licking across the troposphere, the unmistakable sign of atmospheric entry. My heart sank as I realized the doomsday scenario I'd been trained for since childhood was unfurling. Hours later, I regrouped with my resistant cell in our camouflaged subterranean bunker, erected from salvage and carved into an ancient lava tube. Tension was thick as we analyzed the telemetry and trajectory data. No doubts about it, Miguel grunted, his dark eyes narrowed at the projections hovering in our holo tank. That's got to be a hostile invasion force vectoring in on the Torrent Archipelago. Not unexpected, given the galaxy's view of Earth, Amia said grimly. Though young, she was already a capable field medic and tech expert. We're considered nothing but primitives ripe for subjugation. Have they ID'd the bogies yet? I asked Lena, our calm specialist. The blonde shook her head, chewing her lip anxiously. Surface calms are still erratic from the entry debris clouds, but the geometric signatures match Gracanti design which fits their pattern. My stomach clenched. The Gracanti were a member species of the so-called Great Compact that governed the explored galaxies, hulking warlike brutes who reveled in the honor of forcing new races into subservience through their barbaric right of submission. Humanity had been carefully monitoring them for centuries, prepping for this inevitability. Then it's going to be a tough fight, I said, resting my calloused hands on the edge of the holo tank. Even with the element strategies and home field conditioning, we'll be outmatched against hostile battle groups in strength and numbers, not to mention their tech superiority. Is the Eve hypothesis wrong then? Miguel challenged. Does mankind not have a chance to turn the tide, despite all our preparations? I looked around at my comrades, my family in all but blood. Despite the long odds, I saw the determination burning in their eyes that had carried our ancestors through space-age conflicts and allowed us to endure on this primal death world. No, I stated firmly. The Eve hypothesis holds true. We may be the underdogs in their eyes, but underestimating human perseverance, ingenuity, and our connection to this planet will be their fatal mistake. A predatory smile crossed my lips as I activated the bunker's armory fabricators with a DNA-coded pomperant. It's time to show these great compact bastards that when it comes to the earth, the jungle hunts them now. Who's with me? The roars of my brothers and sisters in arms made the ancient lava rock tremble. I could already hear the beasts of Tarinth rising to our call. We struck the Gracanti invaders hard and fast after their main force landed in the Tarinth archipelago. Their arrogance made the first ambushes almost too easy. I watched through my rifle's digital scope as a massive landing shuttle disgorged its cargo onto one of the larger island's hulking combat matches and armored personnel carriers that gleamed with advanced alloys and weaponry. The Gracanti commanders clearly expected minimal resistance as they established their beachhead without putting up force shields or surveying the terrain. Targets are neatly lined up, Hawk. Miguel's voice crackled in my elemental earpiece communicator. Just like our simulations. Copy that, Condor, I replied, glancing over at the half-dozen other camouflaged members of my cell strategically positioned around the landing zone with their own customized ordnance primed. Let's give them a warm Tarrant welcoming gift, on my mark now. At my command, we unleashed a synchronous volley from our ancient yet devastatingly effective weapon systems. Lena's hacked Gracanti comms arrays broadcast a dense surge of EMP interference, temporarily shorting out their advanced electronics. Simultaneously, Amea's thermoseismic charges struck the earth triggering a swarm of localized quakes and camouflaged pitfalls to open up across the beachhead. Heavy artillery shells filled with concentrated acidic biochemical compounds rained down next, 
melting through the match's armored hulls like a literary dissection. Choking miasmas of noxious gases billowed across the battlefield, forcing the Gracanti troopers into environmental suits if they weren't already crushed or dissolved by our elemental barrage. Amongst the chaos, Rastov's servo manipulators remotely hijacked the movements of one of the surviving matches, turning it violently against its allies in a whirling dervish of death. Piercing shrieks and screams in the alien tongue filled the calms as the Gracanti struggled to counter the onslaught they had underestimated. Not so primitive now, are we? I laughed grimly, switching my RP-20 rifle to its heavier armor, piercing mag coil ammunition. I picked off the command staff trying frantically to reorganize their forces, their sophisticated deflector shields useless against the primal power of Tarrant's mercurial environment that we had mastered. Within minutes, nearly half their initial landing troops were decimated, crushed, melted, or asphyxiated. Condor, move your squad to flanking positions, I ordered calmly, sighting another target through my refracting scope. We need to press the offensive before they can call in reinforcements. Roger that, Hawk. The jungle is ours. As Miguel's team moved to ambush the invaders from the tree line, I allowed myself a savage grin. This was just the opening salvo to demonstrate the harsh realities the Gracanti would face on this world. We would leverage every biodiversity advantage, every seismic hoshiliad, every bioluminescent guided trap to make them intimate with the reasons this planet was so ill-suited for dominance. The first hunt was successful, I said, thoroughly enjoying the confusion and fear radiating from the Gracanti survivors as the jungle itself rose up against them. But it's only the beginning of you learning why the Earth will never submit. With a squeeze of my rifle's trigger, another alien commander's head ruptured in a spray of viscera. The message that the human resistance had arrived was received loud and clear. Our early successes took a toll on the Gracanti's arrogance, but they remained frustratingly determined to subjugate Tarrant Roman VI at any cost. Within weeks, their orbital battlecruisers commenced savage bombardments to flush us out of the jungles by sheer incineration. I'll never forget the day the sky itself seemed to split apart with the fury of a thousand shooting stars streaking downwards. Lena's monitoring systems blared with warnings as thermobaric ordnance and plasma bombardment rained across the archipelago from the Gracanti ships overhead. They're not even attempting targeted strikes, Miguel shouted over the deafening roar bracing against the shockwaves rippling through our underground bunker. Just leveling everything in grid patterns. Those maniacs don't care about capturing the planet intact, Amaya realized, eyes widening. They're willing to scorch Tarrant to drive us into the open. Not on my watch, I snarled, pulling up a holomap of the bombardment projections. With a few commands, I enhanced the terrain rendering to include the ancient subterranean lava tube networks I'd meticulously mapped out in the years before the invasion. They're a large enough lava river cavity within range of one of the bombardment grids, if we timed it right. Saddle up, people, I barked. We're going to give those alien butchers a toxic taste they won't forget. Though the jungle around our bunker entrance was being vaporized by orbital plasma, we stuck to the underground lava tubes that shielded us from the onslaught. I took point, guiding my team by the dim glow of mining lamps and the tricord radiation meter in my grip. Shouts over the calm signaled we weren't alone down here civilians had taken refuge in the ancient caves, huddled in terror as the jungle surface disappeared in holocaust blasts. One young family was cornered by a lava stream, the father trying desperately to shield his children behind a stalagmite formation as the superheated flow approached. Hang on, I yelled, catching the man's wild eyes as my team fanned out to clear them an escape path. We're getting you out of here. As Miguel and Rastov pulled the family to safety, I gauged the lava stream. Its viscosity and flow were increasing a clear sign that the bombardment was triggering an eruption of the ancient volcano at the core of this archipelago. Perfect. Head to the southern junction cavern, I told my cell. That's our target. We raced ahead of the swelling lava tide, using handheld drills to bore into the cave walls and emplace clusters of bromide canisters and thermite payloads powerful catalysts to trigger a toxic gaseous eruption. 
All the while, the orbital strikes drew closer like the wrath of angry gods. The very bedrock beneath our feet was groaning in protest. At last we reached the cavern I'd targeted a massive grotto, where the lava river constricted like an hourglass at the flank of the volcano's magma reservoir. The family was already hunkered at the far side with the rest of the civilians as my team worked swiftly to rig our payload. Hawk, bombardment is right on top of our position, Miguel warned. Then we don't have a second to lose, I shouted back, jamming the final charges into the lava's banks and priming the detonators on a cyclical frequency. Get to cover now. We scrambled back just as the first salvo of burning plasma rained down from above, shaking the very roots of the volcano. Timing was everything if we missed the resonance even by a fraction, we were dead. The lava in the grotto began to bubble violently from our devices. Gaseous plumes of aerosolized bromide hissed upwards, priming for detonation. One final shockwave from the orbital strikes was the trigger we needed. A thunderous eruption blasted through the grotto, rapidly moving outwards in an ever-expanding sphere of superheated gas and toxic fury. The plasma rain bored through the surface, exposing the volatile pocket below to the open air in a chaotic chain reaction. We shielded the civilians as a towering vortex of poisonous fumes, searing ash and molten basalt geysered upwards, swallowing the Gracchanti orbital barrages like a vengeful beast. The scouring conflagration stretched kilometers high, visible even from orbit as an ominous storm of death blotting out the sun. Over the calms, I heard the panicked shrieks of Gracchanti warriors as their ranks were decimated by the ever-expanding pyroclastic wrath we had unleashed from Tarinth Roman Six itself. No technology could insulate them from the primal power of the planet they had dared scorch. As the choking gases dispersed, we emerged at last battered but victorious, the jungle reborn in flames all around us. I cradled the young family's child in my arms, her innocent eyes shining in awe at the devastation. This is the face your masters have awoken, Gracanti, I rasped at the smoldering sky allowing myself a grim smile. The primordial soul of an angry earth you have failed to extinguish. Our unorthodox tactics and the hellish conditions on Tarinth Roman VI started making waves that extended far beyond the archipelago. Word of the stalemated invasion reached the highest echelons of the so-called Great Compact that governed the galaxy's allied civilizations. I'll never forget the tight grimace on Lena's face as she patched through an intercepted transmission from one of the compact's command frequencies. Even the alien's bulbous, multifaceted eyes seemed to convey arrogant disdain through the hologram. A mere primitively insignificant species on an uncolonized death world, the amphibious ambassador was saying in a reedy, gurgling language that Lena's translation matrix struggled with. The fact the Gracanti have dedicated such forces to this non-priority is already an strategic overreaction. Their scouting reports clearly underestimated the environmental hostilities involved. Nevertheless, another alien in ornate robes countered, their slender form whip-like with gesticulating appendages. The numbers of Gracanti casualties from guerrilla conflicts with a human resistance has become too statistically significant to ignore any longer. We risk emboldening other undesirables if this debacle is perceived as weakness. You can't be serious, the ambassador sputtered in outrage. This is still well within acceptable losses for a limited gayiform pacification operation. The humans may be annoyingly resourceful pests, but they'll inevitably be exterminated like all the others before submitting to Gracanti rule. It's simply a matter of diverting more suppression forces to overwhelm and sterilize the infestation. As the transmission cut out in a burst of static, Lena's eyes narrowed in a tight scowl. She'd seen the casualty reports same as me heavy Gracanti losses from even our most conservative offensives that took advantage of Tarinth's ever-shifting hazards. The arrogance of that Grohl stack is exactly why their superior brethren are going to end up biting off more than they can chew, she spat. Miguel just grinned savagely while sharpening the edge of his combat machete. Sounds like the jungle is going to get plenty more invasive pests to eradicate. I frowned, analyzing the raw intel we'd gained. As dismissive as the compact politicians were, 
Their mentions of incoming suppression reinforcements corroborated with Rastov's calculations on Grakanti fleet deployments headed our way. We were gearing up for the biggest slugfest yet. Still, this was a potential opportunity for the resistance too. The fact we were being discussed at all signaled that our efforts weren't going unnoticed in certain influential circles. If we could continue frustrating their attempts at pacification, perhaps we could start shifting outside perceptions about the inevitability of Earth submitting to compact dominance. It was a faint hope, but one we had to grasp if humanity was going to emerge with some semblance of self-determination after this crucible. With renewed determination, I rallied my people to start preparing our most audacious counterstrike yet against the Grakanti's orbital capabilities. We would show these great compacts just how primitive our desperation could become. Weeks later, I watched with a feral grin as our tech-camouflaged infiltration teams struck deep within the invaders' central command vessel hovering above the Tarinth ruins. Lena's virus payloads bypassed their cyber defenses while we broadcast focused beam jamming to disrupt their electronic warfare suites. In a synchronized strike, the battle-ruined archipelago lit up like a string of arcane rituals as we unleashed of electromagnetic pulses from our geoseismic induction batteries buried deep in the island's volcanic networks. The EMPs cascaded upwards, overwhelming the flagship's shielding and shorting out its vital systems in a dazzling burst of energy. Over the calms, I could hear the panicked shouts and alarms from the Grakanti crew as their prized vessel listed in lower atmosphere, venting gases and debris. Escape pods and troop landers disengaged in a chaotic frenzy to abandon the stricken ship. That just made my smile grow wider as the command vessel began its uncontrolled descent towards the scorched jungle below. A blazing fireball slammed into the earth like the planet itself had reached up to violently slap away the invaders' arrogance. Around me, my resistance fighters cheered and howled their triumph at the symbolic blow we had struck. No words needed to be spoken, the point was made loud and clear. If the compact thought some limited extermination operation would break humanity's spirit on our own home world, they were catastrophically underestimating what extremes we were willing and able to fight to. Our successful counterstrike against the Grakanti flagship was a hard-won victory, but one that was bittersweetly short-lived. The sudden loss of their orbital command center only enraged their central fleets into marshalling, even greater forces to crush our resistance once and for all. Within weeks, we detected increased faster-than-light signatures in the outer sectors of the Turrent system as their armada reinforcements arrived. Sensor drones we managed to piggyback on the wreckage gave us nightmarish glimpses bulbous capital ships of alien design bristling with enough firepower to shatter moons. I've crunched the telemetry, Amaya reported somberly during an emergency operations briefing. If even half those ships make it into high orbit, they'll have enough saturation bombing capacity to scour this entire archipelago down to the mantle. The holographic projections looming in the middle of our bunker showed wave after wave of bogies forming up against us more firepower than we'd ever witnessed amassed. My fists clenched tightly as the reality sank in. They're not going to accept anything less than our total annihilation, are they? Miguel growled, fingering the hilt of his blade anxiously. Afraid not, brother, I said grimly, staring up at the projections. To the Grakanti, our continued existence is the gravest insult to their warped species' pride. They're determined to exterminate us if it's the last thing they do no compromise, no quarter given. For a long moment, a heavy silence fell over the room as the weight of our next desperate gambit settled on us. This wasn't going to be a battle for territory or even victory anymore. It would be a frantic delaying action to buy what little time we could before oblivion. Finally, I stepped forward and zoomed the hollow projection out to a wider system view focusing in particular on the circumpolar oceanic patterns around the Tarrant Islands. On a hunch, I requested Rastov's latest geothermal mapping simulations to overlay. An idea began formulating as insane as it was ambitious. Potentially our one last wild card to regain any leverage in the face of overwhelming enemy superiority. I studied the data streams carefully. We can't stop that armada conventionally, I announced, turning back to my comrades with a gleam in my eye. 
but perhaps we don't have to. Lena immediately picked up on my thought process, her clever eyes narrowing. You're not suggesting. I flashed her a grim smile and pulled up the potential seismic activity zones that Rastov's models highlighted. Not just suggesting, we're going to drown them in their own hubris using the very world they sought to conquer against them. It was a long shot timing the strategic releases of thermal pressure across Tarrant's volatile submarine rift systems, unleashing megadons of pent-up magma and seawater in precise calculated vectors to trigger a raging tsunami force aimed squarely at the incoming Gracanti fleets, a primordial battering ram of the planet itself to swat their armada aside like ANSEC construction toys. Even if they somehow weathered the initial shock of tidal forces, our strategically placed resonance inducers could keep the waters lethally turbulent the perfect elemental disruption until we could regroup and counterattack against their battered ranks. It was a desperate plan of sheer elemental magnitude I was proposing, but one that could even the playing field long enough for humanity to survive. To keep hope alive that the Earth could never truly be conquered so long as we were willing to unleash its wrath. I know the stakes, I told my warriors seeing the grim determination in their eyes, even as the tactical simulation swirled with apocalyptic fury. And I know it will take everything we have, every last scrap of our sweat, blood, and soul we have to give this world. But for the sake of our people, there is no other choice left. For Earth, Rastov rumbled with an approving nod. For Earth, we all affirmed in unison, ready to wield the primordial elements that had given humanity life as the ultimate weapons of our defiance. Our desperate gambit to unleash Tarrant Vi's own fury against the Gracanti Armada was one brutal offensive that even I couldn't have fully anticipated the sheer scale of. But our very existence depended on crashing those tsunami force waves directly into the invaders with pinpoint timing and coordination. For weeks, my resistance cells carefully infiltrated and sabotaged the subsurface geothermal vent stabilizers across key areas of the Tarrant tectonic belt. Simultaneous thermite dissolution packages were seeded within precise magma uppling zones calculated by Rastov's simulations. At the appointed hour, Lena's viral infiltrations bypassed the vent failsafes while Amaya's team detonated the dissolution charges. Like a series of dominoes, the subterranean forges belched forth hundreds of cubic tons of molten basalt in calculated eruptions across the seafloors. The sudden intrusions of superheated magma into the ocean's depths triggered gargantuan thermal expansions in the water columns above them. Geyser plumes of flashing boiled steam erupted skyward as those focused overpressure zones rapidly displaced trillion-ton masses in the most destructive waves the planet had mustered since the primordial era. I was witness to the initial cataclysm from high above in one of our modified drop gunships. The ocean itself seemed to swell upwards ahead of my disbelieving eyes, stretching the visible curvature of Torrent's horizon into an impossibly steep liquid wall that raced across the archipelago faster than any tsunami in recorded history. Massive displacement waves radiated outward, swamping the outer islands and cascading inundations that simply erased any piece of the Gracanti occupation forces unlucky enough to be groundside. Entire landmasses were swallowed up by the tidal pulses, as the atmosphere itself was saturated with oceanic overspray that turned the skies into a thundering maelstrom. But that was only the opening salvo of our devastatingly orchestrated assault on the alien fleets massing above the Tarnth orbit. The true killer payload was the bizarre, atmospheric rivers that coalesced from the hurricane condensers created in the tsunami wake. I could scarcely believe my eyes as those liquidized megaplumes of vapor and seawater rapidly acquired mass and cohesion transforming into cyclopean tendrils of raging fluid fury that arced back up towards the outer stratosphere. It was as if the full wrath of the primordial ocean itself was being directed upwards in retaliation for the Gracanti's attempts to bombard it into submission. From my gunship's viewport, I watched in awe as those watery whips lashed across the Gracanti's forward fleets, shattering their hulls and disgorging them from orbit in ablative showers. Gouts of incandescent plasma and crackling lightning burst from the ruptures as those ships' powerful reactors destabilized all at once only adding to the cosmic frenzy unleashed.
Entire armored divisions and capital vessels were dragged down and screaming, molten contrails from such impossible heights that the mines simply refused to quantify the depths of devastation wrought. It was at that apex of the elemental storm that Lena triggered the harmonic resonators we'd seeded across the archipelago seabeds over the past weeks in preparation. Tuned to emit deep pulse vibrations tailored specifically to agitate Turrent's unique subduction trench patterns, those sonic disruptors churned the oceans of our world into a frothing, implacable chaos. Like an angry leviathan awakening from its slumber, the torrent tidal patterns were drastically unstable whipped into a literal maelstrom of towering sea spikes, rogue waves, and storm pulses that dashed across latitudes with undeniable force. For hours, the devastation continued unabated, smashing aside the Gracanti's attempted counter-flotilla actions with almost casual ease. Their mistresses of war amounted to nothing against the raw, reborn bedlam of the planet itself refusing to be subjugated further. Gouts of liberated atmosphere and volatilized seawater geysered skyward in bursts of light and vapor, rising so high that at times they sheared the very outer ionosphere with their impacts. No orbital sanctuary was safe from Torrent's primordial rage unleashed. When the last echoing thunderclaps subsided and the gunships were able to set down again, we emerged to survey the devastation. Countless billions of tons of extraterrestrial war materials were strewn across our world like the remains of a corpse picked apart by Terran vultures. As I gazed upon the ruins of the once invincible Gracanti Armada, I felt an ancestral pride and defiance resonate within me that was shared by my battered comrades. No force, no matter how advanced, could counter a force as intrinsically attuned to this death world as we were. The rage of an angry earth would never be bound. Even after our stunning counter-offensive that shattered the Gracanti's attempts at orbital subjugation, the war for Tarinthvi's survival was far from over. If anything, our victories had catalyzed a response that would draw the attention of powers far beyond the invaders. It began with an unusual coding flare from Lena's monitoring systems, while we were still regrouping our forces in the aftermath zone. At first, I dismissed it as just another attempt by the Gracanti to cut our communications or sabotage our networks. But the intrusion vectors were unlike anything in their existing cyber warfare repertoire. I'm picking up phase transitional encryption activity, Lena reported tensely, forming a stable quantum tachyon channel. That's compact comsec protocols, Amea exclaimed, her eyes going wide. But at that bandwidth, it can only be one thing, an observational mandate being issued. A chill went down my spine at her words. As fragmented and distrustful as the various alien races were of each other, there were certain overriding policies that even they respected when it came to enforcing the so-called Great Compact across the galaxies. And few were more serious than a Code Sentience Containment Directive. Dread nodded my gut as Lena confirmed the worst those signals were high traffic orders being dispersed for the compact to initiate a full-scale observational mandate over our lightless sector. Which meant only one thing. They were deploying observers, assessors, and potentially far worse measures to ensure our unruly conflict was brought back under their control. Despite Tarinth Vi's isolated periphery positioning, we were about to have the entitled eyes of the galaxy bearing witness to our bitter resistance against the Gracanti invaders. Not only that, but the arrogant aliens had likely drawn over reactive conclusions that this primitive sentience uprising needed to be forcibly contained or subjugated before it could spread instability further among other species under their dominion. We had no choice but to withdraw many of our outer fomented operations back to more fortified and defensible positions in anticipation of some form of compact intervention descending into our war zone. I had Miguel's Ranger Scouts conduct hit and run sweeps to sabotage and bleed the incoming Gracanti reinforcements, while Rastoff erected some of our new exotic weapon bastions to counter any capital ship orbital presence. But nothing could have prepared us for the sheer alienness of what the observational mandate made material over Torrent's atmosphere. Our first visual contact was through Amea's high-powered telescope arrays, as she tracked the earliest outer vectoring trajectories during a rare celestial lull. By the ancestors. She gasped. Hawk, you need to see this. 
I hurried over and peered through the optics and felt my blood turn to ice water at the bizarre geometries moving towards us. Nothing in recorded xenological databases could have prepared me for the utterly incomprehensible deep krill crafts that unfolded into being like demented clockwork versions of marine leviathans crafted by starforges. Their shimmering flanks tapered into heat-scaled tentacles of unusual matter throbbing with frequencies that seemed to distort the very light around them. They don't even register on thermal optics or emissions scans, Lena said, her voice hushed. Those crafts are something beyond. Sovrenian specters, Rastov growled, disbelief and fear tinting his gravelly voice. The name invoked from darkest theoretical zenimiths sent a convulsive shiver even through my combat-hardened nerves. These weren't mere observer crafts. They were something far, far worse hinted at in only the most obscure fragments of xenoarchaeological data we'd recovered over the centuries. Extrajurisdictional entities empowered by the ancient compact to intervene against existential threats to its dominance that even their armies could not contain. Those malefic alien geometries were the harbinger vanguard of a force capable of locking down or outright extinguishing this entire stellar region if we continued to defy their shadowed hegemony over the space lanes of the galaxies. And they were here solely because we had upset the complacent order. My jaw tightened as I watched those uncanny, quasi-material craft vectors inexorably descend. I knew with a pit forming in my soul that things were only going to escalate much further before our war for freedom was over. Prepare all cells for a level gamma contingency escalation, I ordered resolutely. If the Compact wants a confirmation of our sentience uprising, we're going to give them an engagement to burn into their memory. The arrival of those strange, alien observer constructs from the Compact was the catalyst that finally allowed us to turn the tide of galactic opinion regarding the invasion of Earth. With their quasi-reality sensors bearing witness, we had a chance to broadcast our side of the resistance to any races willing to listen across the stars. It began with a daring strike by some of our most skilled operatives against the Sovrenian specters themselves. Using interference scripts provided by Lena, we managed to temporarily disrupt the higher dimensional matrices allowing those extrajurisdictional craft to manifest. During that fragile window of weakened quantum coherence, Amaya's team was able to board several of the compromised alien vessels and implant remote uplink transmission codes that piggybacked their data stream emissions. In the following days and weeks, we broadcast a continuous feed of uncorrupted data bursts rich with first-hand accounts and documentation of the Gracanti invasion's brutal attempts to overwhelm Tarinth Roman VI through naked force. Visual records showed in visceral clarity the atrocities committed against civilian populations, the widespread ecosphere devastation wrought upon our homeworld, and the unyielding tenacity of the human resistance defending itself from total subjugation. Most critically, we included evidence of how even after defeating the orbital fleets, the Compact's arrogant overseers still decreed Tyranth quarantine for destabilizing primal aggression and targeted for comprehensive xenosubjugation. Their intent was clear, the complete ethnocompaction of humanity into servile status by any means necessary. We beseech any spacefaring forces who detect these records to bear witness to the genocidal agenda enforced on the human domains. Lena narrated in her solemn, multilingual bursts. The Great Compact has given itself over to the dominance of warmonger ideologies hellbent on extinguishing emergent civilizations through technologically disproportionate force or total biological assimilation. We fight only to preserve our very existence. The payloads dispersed outwards in tight hypergeometric compression bursts evading the fragmented counter-efforts of the observers while proliferating across charted territories and commercial space lanes. At first, our pleas seemed to go unheeded or simply dismissed as more primitive savagery as the Grac anti-propagandists tried to frame it. But over time, visible shifts began occurring in how our struggle was being monitored and interpreted. Ship registries began pinging our network nodes, analyzing the telemetric and archaeoforensic data baked into our transmissions. Some brave scribes republished excerpts of the more poignant accounts on public censor webs outside of compact jurisdiction. Others uploaded key visual records to intellectual library databases in defiance of growing censorship policies. 
Slowly, the stranglehold of the Great Compact's narrative superiority began to crack. My heart leapt when Rastoff detected several enigmatic broadcaster signatures replying with messages of solidarity and promises of covert resupply dispersals. Amia and Lena were able to decrypt some of the courier data, it was miraculous. Support bases, entire outcast fringeworlder collectives, even a few open defiant oligarchic rebel holdings were being stirred into unrest by our plight. They see through the facade of Gracanti righteousness, Lena said with a slow smile spreading across her features. Whole swaths of oppressy species and free spacer malcontents are using your resistance as a beacon to rally around. Shock and outrage rippled through the Xenopolities as more of our catalyzed archives hit mainstream disty works. We began receiving encrypted bursts of anger, dissent, and even strategic data caches leaking back to aid our efforts from many unlikely quarters. Eons of Gracanti crusades kept the Xenocidals unified, Rastoff said sagely. But proof of their iron petrifying before the determination of even a primitive species has splintered their imposed reality asunder. I watched the maps with mixed astonishment and vindication as more renegade actor pings joined our contacts. Deep-rooted alien species who'd endured generational memories of Gracanti oppression saw humanity's resilience as a spark fueling their own resistance to the Great Compact's harmonious regimentation. My eyes stung with unshed tears as I witnessed how some of the oldest, most ostracized aliens in the galaxy were offering us official solidarity and voicing mutual repulsion towards this continuation of infinite subjugations. By the Compact's own perverse universal laws, they have now legitimized our uprisal and the severance of Tarinth Roman VI from their authority, Lena said. My fists clenched, renewed determination filling my being. Then let's ensure the next engagement gives the observers no doubt our fight will echo across a thousand stars until this tyranny itself at last submits, I growled. We were no longer alone in our desperation. Tarinth had become a beacon of sedition against the Great Compact, and I would ensure the pyre burned ever brighter after our next battle. Despite the rising tides of support and solidarity from pockets across the galaxy rallying around our resistance, the battles raging on Tyranth Roman VI were reaching a fever pitch. The Great Compact and their Gracanti enforcers were determined to crush our destabilizing uprising at any cost. Through Lena's monitoring systems, we detected increased faster-than-light signatures and cosmic distortions building in the outer sectors. A single tear rolled down her dirt-streaked cheek as the dread numbers crunched across her displays. They're amassing everything, Hawk, she reported hoarsely. Capital incursion fleets from over a dozen linked hives, heavy ordnance staging groups, enforcement armadas, were about to be hit with a summary extrasectional directive. I grimaced as the projection forecasts blinked outwards from Tarinth with sobering finality. The Compact's ruling cabal had clearly grown weary of our defiance, issuing an ultimatum of multi-vector saturation bombardment until this plane of reality was scoured of any trace of humanity's seditious resistance. Total xenocidal directive had been authorized. Then I suppose it's time we showed these oppressive bastards what the last rites of a dying species look like, I said grimly, fingering the ceremonial rifle Rastov had crafted for me. If we're going to go out, We'll make them burn the memory of Tarinth Vi's defiance across every star they've subjugated. Resolve burned in the eyes of my surviving warriors as we triple-checked our payload configurations and dispersed our final tactical cells into deeply fortified redoubts across Tarinth's shattered atolls, volcanic valleys, and magma shelves. If this was to be humanity's Ragnarok, we would leverage every shred of our primal bonds to this world in orchestrating a cataclysm that would earn eternal infamy in the Xenoverses. When the bombardment finally began, it was as if the very universe itself were cracking asunder all around us. Solid planets and moons were shattered into cosmic shrapnel by the near-infinite mass drivers and dark cluster warheads of the capital dreadnought's cyclotronic lances. Multi-dimensional particle clouds, gravitsunami wave fronts, and entropic reality ruptures tore through the Tarinth system in overwhelming sheets of destruction. Lances of exotic plasma stabbed downwards from the heavens themselves like the fingers of a malicious cosmic deity bent on exterminating an insignificant gnat buzzing in its sight. 
Entire island chains and continental ridges were seared away in antimatter contrails that scarred the very mantle of Tarrant Roman VI. Arcologies and fortified bunkers built to withstand the ravages of this death world simply ceased to exist, erased from reality by beams of concentrated unreality. Yet still we endured, clinging to our mother planet's bloodied wounds, even as layer after layer of her atmosphere was torn away to expose the molten underbelly beneath. Cyclonic firestorms of aerosolized heavy metals and plasmatized compounds churned across the desiccated surface as the cosmic onslaught breached Tarrant's core. I lost track of how many times the ravaged husk of our homeworld was utterly awash in searing hellscapes as those Xeno-built cosmic furnaces purged and repurged the invasion zone from higher spatial planes of our reality cluster. With our terrestrially-based arsenals depleted, we resorted to deploying our final doomsday deterrence, massively overloaded cyclonic induction topologies pumped by the last dregs of our multi-generational antimatter reserves. With a series of deafening percussive detonations across the blasted continents, those archaic, pre-warp hypershock reaction chambers belched forth inconceivable extremities that radiated across the frequency bands in rippling bursts of pure distortion and interference. Our frantic was blind and unguided simply pumping gargantuan levels of brute force spectrum immersive fields across Tarrant in hopes of frequency scattering and collapsing the higher dimensional interpositions focused upon us. For an eternity, that was all that existed an apocalyptic conflagration churned across light itself as reality itself buckled under the indigestible forces being unleashed. Swaths of geography blinked in and out of coherence only to be atomized in the next moment. Impossible gravitational singularities were born and strangled in the same incandescent pulse amid a panoramic scouring of all four basic terrestrial forces coming undone. I was long past knowing if the roaring sound was the intense radiation storms or my own voice, joining the unified scream tearing from the throats of my surviving brethren as we enacted the dying convulsions of our species against the megastructure abominations bearing down on us. All I knew is that we had become the fury the final, terminal voltage of defiance etched forever into the archives of existence by Tarrant Vi's devastated echo. When the scorched darkness finally cleared, and those of us still clinging to reality re-emerged, we were surrounded by the shredded, glitching remnants of what had been intended as the ultimate xenocidal force. We'd gambled everything, unleashing distortions that not even the compact's rarefied science could completely assimilate or neutralize with their capabilities. All around in the silence, the uncomprehending husks and fragments of those unstoppable war constructs littered the shattered bones of Tarinth like it had devoured the blight of extinction leveled against us. My throat rasped with the acrid smoke as I beheld the ruin, my eyes finding those of my surviving brothers and sisters in arms. In those ashen gazes I saw no fear only a defiant pride at having endured beyond, even our last desperate strategies. Somehow, the essence of our birth world's children had emerged from the all-consuming fires yet again, still very much alive and unbroken despite the Armageddon leveled against us. Lena's calm links crackled to life first as signals began piercing the coherence interference. Her eyes widened at the data streams flooding through dissident uprisings and revolts breaking out across compact space in response to our self-immolation. Each burst of insurrectionist fervor inspired by news of our unquenched defiance. You did it, John, she sobbed in awed realization. Our stand here has crippled the compact's tyranny across the cosmos. Collapsed against the vitrified crater walls around me, my surviving warriors let out a ragged cheer at the revelation. Our primal souls had endured beyond even total xeno-extinction itself, becoming a revolutionary spark transcending all of their vaunted, imperialist principles of subjugation. Despite the universal holocaust leveled against us, the unbound spirit of humanity would continue burning across eternity. In the weeks and months after our cataclysmic last stand against the Great Compact's attempts at xeno-extinction, the shockwaves of Tarrant Vi's defiance rippled outwards in ways nobody could have foreseen. What had begun as a brutal invasion to subjugate humanity transformed into the catalyzing spark of a revolution transcending galaxies. 
word of how we had endured and ultimately crippled the compact's most obscenely overwhelming saturation bombardment swept through the dissident fringes like a wildfire vapor trail. Our final transmissions from the shattered surface, those raw, unfettered bellows of sheer resistance against oblivion itself, became immortalized as literal cataclysmic scripture for emboldening every subjugated species yearning to breathe free. Lena's frantic analyzes tracked the escalating patterns of active revolts and martial reclamations erupting across formerly harmonized regions. With every insurrectionist cell unifying behind the victorious human spirit of Terenth as their rallying icon, the compact's vaunted military juggernauts found themselves collapsing under the accumulated mass. It turned out the delusional oligarchs ruling over that enlightened compact of oppression had grievously underestimated the powder keg their attempted xenocide had ignited. Their sanctimonious attempts to justify our unavoidable extermination as some merciful obligation acted as an accelerant across a universe of downtrodden, gasping to break those intolerable chains at last. Even some of the compact's most industrialized core hives saw civilian uprisings and atmospheric debridements from the many Enlightenment fleets being recalled to combat the rapidly spreading unrest. Entire multi-system production forges transformed into smelters for birthing the fleets of a thousand separate liberation armadas against their former subjugators. War raged across the fabric of occupied space at a scope and scale for which the Great Compact was utterly unprepared to counter despite their formidable technological supremacy. The spirit of Tarrant Roman VI resonated across too many fronts, generating simultaneous flashpoints that overwhelmed even their most adaptive Estratops matrices. From what few channels of communication we were able to monitor through the interference storms, it became evident that the compact central leadership was fracturing under the pressures of their own machinations imploding upon them. No amount of newly ratified, final extermination doctrines or obscenely disproportionate xenocidal mandates could smother the universal pyre of secessionist fervor Torrenth had sparked after their failures. In one of the most heavily encrypted messages Lena was able to decrypt, she translated orders from what appeared to be the highest echelons of the compact's panicking leadership caste, requesting an emergency parlay and arbitration with the survivors of humanity's non-codifiable resistance force on Tarrant Roman VI now being referred to as the Defiant World. The subspace transmission spoke of desperation in the florid language of a crumbling interstellar hegemony, finally seeing the futility of their eternal crusades. Apparently even the most advanced xeno-rational analysts were at a loss to counteract the corruptive psychopathogen emanating from what remained of the human domains after withstanding the very cusp of universal erasure. When the offer was transmitted for us to participate in official xenological summit proceedings to treat on the terms of our potential read mission to compacted real space relations, I had to stifle the urge to laugh bitterly at the gall. These decrepit, dying husks of an oppression still clung to their delusions of cosmic authority and the belief that we would seek anything less than a full severance. Given everything they had attempted to inflict upon us, I knew any diplomatic entreaty was merely a stalling tactic to buy time until they could formulate new strategies for conventional xenosubjugation once the insurrections were put down across their dominions. Such was the arrogance ingrained within their species over eons of absolute authority. I turned to Lena with a weary smile as my fist clenched the tattered flag of the human resistance, its emblem of Tarrant Vise burnished, primordial continents emblazoned eternally despite all attempts at eradication. Tell them humanity acknowledges their request for parley and arbitration under the traditional rights of their precious compacts violated charters, I said, a renewed spark burning in my chest but also make them understand that if they expect us to entertain any outcome other than the complete dissolution of their dominion over the stars forever, then they will be made intimate with the same oblivion they sought to inflict upon us. Lena's eyes shone with grim vindication as she transmitted my response through channels, now being monitored across a thousand worlds and species rising up to hold their liberators to account. In the distance, the colossal wreckage of the Great Compact's most powerful xeno-arcology jutted from the shattered horizon of Tarrant like a cemetery spire impaled upon the scarred surface. 
its mighty flanks and orbital rings twisted into mangled geometric scars that defied the computational babels of how they could still retain structural cohesion after the forces unleashed upon them. Just another example, I supposed, of how the fury of our world and her children would always defy the impossible in the face of subjugation's arrogance. The birthright bequeathed to us from this vengeful planet would deny the fetters of any poisoned harmonies imposed from beyond the stars ever again. As my surviving comrades girded themselves for our coming judgment against the extraversal oligarchy that had dared trespass upon humanity's sovereignty, a grim smile creased my features. The ragged human resistance had been reborn as the victors of Tarinth Roman VI, and we would usher in a new order where none would ever again dare to underestimate the majesty and resilience of Earth's defiant spirit.